Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today in part 2.8 of Mastering Parallel Programming series, we are diving into the world of P-Link Queue. We have covered a lot in our previous videos about P-Link Queue from introduction to optimizations. But now it's time to address a critical question. When should we use P-Link Queue and when might it not be the best choice? So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon that way you will be notified every time I upload any video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. P-Link Queue, Parallel Language Integrated Query in c -Shop. p Q is one of the structured data parallelism APIs that extends Link Queue to support the parallel execution of the queries. If you watched my previous videos on mastering parallel programming series, you might recall this diagram. Well, today we'll go ahead one more step further where I will be talking about when should we use p -Link Queue and when might it not be the best choice. When to use p -Link Queue in c -Shop and when not to. When deciding whether to use p -Link Queue in your application, it's important to consider the nature of the problem we are trying to resolve. Here is a breakdown of scenarios where p -Link Queue is beneficial and where it might not be the best choice. Okay, so let's start with the scenarios where p -Link Queue truly signs. Number one, data parallelism. Here I have written one query where numbers is equal to innumerable dot range one one million where p link queue from num in numbers dot as parallel where num percent two equal equal to zero select num. So here I have written a parallel query that filters even numbers from a range of integers from one to one million. That's what this p link queue is doing. So with the help of this example, you understand that when we need to perform the same operation on multiple data elements simultaneously, such as filtering, mapping, or aggregating data from a collection, so p -Link is the best fit. Next, embarrassingly parallel problems. Imagine you have a task that embarrassingly parallel. What does it mean? It means that it can be easily divided into independent subtasks that can be executed concurrently. So p -Link excels in these situations. For example, let's say you are crunching numbers on a massive data set where each element can be processed independently. So p -Link you can slice through this task like a hot knife through butter, leveraging multiple CPU cores to speed up your application. Finally, we have a structure blocking task, another sweet spot for p -Link you. So these are the operations that involve waiting for external resources like calling multiple web services simultaneously. p -Link use asynchronous processing capabilities sign over here. Efficiently handling these blocking operation without tying up the main thread. So if you are juggling multiple input output intensive tasks, p -Link you can help you keep the ball running without missing a beat. Okay, so now let's talk about scenarios where p -Link you might not be the best fit. Number one, a small data sets. For a small data sets or operation that are inherently sequential and don't benefit from parallelism, using p -Link you might introduce unnecessary overhead without providing any performance boost. Number two, shared state or mutable data. p -Link you assumes that the data being operated on is immutable or at least not modified during parallel execution. If your operation involves shared mutable state or data that can be modified concurrently, you might run into issue with race condition and data consistency. That's what it is advisable. In such situation, we should not use p -Link you. Number three, limited hardware resources. If your hardware resources such as CPU cores are limited, using p -Link you for parallel execution might not provide significant performance improvements and could potentially degrade performance due to increased overhead. Number four, imaging or pixel processing. When you are performing image processing, it means you are going to collect millions of pixels into an output sequence. While p -Link you can technically handle this, the collation process can create a bottleneck. It slows down your system performance. In cases like this, it's often more efficient to bypass p -Link you and manage multi-threading using other techniques like the parallel class or task parallelism. That's why p -Link you may not be the best choice for image processing tasks. Last but not the least, non-CPU intensive task. Finally, not all tasks are created equal when it comes to P-Link queue. If your task isn't CPU intensive or doesn't involve significant computation, P-Link queue might not offer much of a speed boost. So tasks that are primarily input-output bound or involved lightweight computation might actually incur overhead for, from parallelization, outweighing any potential benefit. That's what it is advisable. We should not opt p -Link queue for such operation. Okay, we have seen when to use p -Link queue, when not to use p -Link queue. Let's tie it all together with an example. Imagine you are analyzing a large collection of documents, extracting keywords from each one. 
Since the analysis for each document is independent, P-Link, you can turbocharge this process by parallelizing the test analysis across multiple documents, so slashing your processing time. That's the best situation you can go for the P-Link. On the flip side, if you are tackling a task like resizing images where intricate pixel manipulation and collation are involved, P-Link might not be the best choice due to the collation bottleneck. In this case, opting for a different parallelization approach would likely yield better results. Okay, so that brings me to end up my session. To sum up, P-Link is a powerful tool for paralyzing certain types of the problems. But it's crucial to assess your task nature before diving in. Whether it's embarrassingly parallel problems or a structure blocking task, P-Link can be your ally in speeding up your application. But remember, not all tasks are a good fit for the P-Link. So choose wisely and happy parallel programming. That's all for this video guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.